Option spreads are quickly becoming a more and more popular way for everyday investors to minimize their risk or speculate on direction. In today's video, we'll be specifically diving into the Interactive Brokers platform and breaking down the steps to create the most popular spreads commonly used today. This will include vertical spreads, iron condors, and butterfly spreads. Now, jumping right into the option chain itself, let's first start by describing what it is we're actually looking at here. To begin with, looking in the upper left-hand corner of the chain, you can actually see what stock it is that we're trading. So in this case, we're trading Alibaba, or BABA for short. Just to the right on that same line, we can actually see how the stock is doing today. So right there, it says Alibaba last traded for 86.86, and it's currently up 11 cents a share. Just below that, we can actually see a few tabs listed there, which are actually going to act as our filters. That'll adjust what information gets displayed down below in the chain itself. Looking up here at the very first tab listed called the list view, this is actually how we can change how the options expirations are visible. So as of right now in list view, it means they're listed down below in the description. If I were to click on that and instead flip it over to tabbed view, I can then see the options expirations up here as several different tabs. Now for me personally, I'm actually a fan of the list view because it's just what I'm used to. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it back to that. Then moving over to the next filter, you can see I currently have 10 strikes visible and those strike prices are listed down here below. So from 82 to 91, that is currently 10 strikes showing. If I wanted to change that, adjust the number of strikes I was seeing, I would simply come up here to where it says 10, go ahead and click on that and then either use one of these drop down pre-filled menus or just type in how many I wanna see. So in my case, I'm gonna select 20 here, go ahead and hit enter. And now down below, I can see 20 available strikes for May 27th. Now, finally, the very last one we'll talk about up there is right here where it shows how many options expirations we're currently seeing. In this case, since I currently have three months selected, if I were to come down here, I'm only looking up to three months out in time. If I wanted to see every single expiration available for Alibaba, I would simply come up here to three months and select max. Looking down here below, I can see it now goes all the way out to January 19th of 2024. Now, looking here in the center is where we can actually see all of the expirations for Alibaba. So it's going to list first the date of expiration, then the number of days until expiration, and then over here on the far right-hand side is the current implied volatility. Now, you guys may also notice that some of those expirations are in white, some of them are in yellow. The ones that are in yellow are the weekly options expirations. The ones that are in white are the standard monthlies. From here, once we actually decide which expiration we want to trade, we would simply click on the expiration date. So in this case, let's say we wanted to trade the May 27th options. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. From there, looking down below, we can again see all of the available strike prices right in the center column. Now to the left of all of those strikes are the available call options. To the right are all of the available put options. You guys may also notice that the in the money options have kind of a purplish shaded background, whereas the out of the money options have more of a tan background. Looking towards the top of the option chain, we can also see our informational columns. In my case, I've got open interest, volume, bid and ask, and then delta and theta. If you guys wanted to adjust those column headers and change the information being displayed, we would simply come up here to the settings menu, then select settings. From there, once we get to the settings menu, we would simply come over here to the left-hand side and select layout. This will then display all of the columns we currently have visible on the left-hand side, and then all of the columns we could add on the right-hand side. Now, in my case, I am perfectly happy with all of the ones I currently have showing, so I'm simply going to come down here and select OK. So now that we actually have an idea of what it is we're looking at here and how to customize the option chain a little bit, let's next go over how we would place our trades. Now, the first one we're going to begin with is actually a vertical spread, and we're going to talk about both a long and short vertical spread. Before I actually hop into actually creating it, I do need to come down here and open up the strategy builder, or at least turn it on. This is then going to allow me to create spreads much easier because it's going to add each additional leg down here below so I can actually manually create my spread. Now, beginning with a long vertical call spread, this is basically saying I am bullish on the underlying stock and I think it's going to go up. However, rather than just buying a single leg call option, I'm hedging my risk. I'm reducing how much money I have to outlay for this trade. Now, again, in this example of a long vertical call spread, I am saying I am bullish on Alibaba. So looking here at the available strike prices, Let's say this $85 call struck my eye. Looking here on the left-hand side, I can see it's currently going for $450 by $465. Now, remember, anytime we want to buy an option in this platform, we click on the ask. Whenever we want to sell an option, we click on the bid. So in my case, since I want to buy this $85 call, I'm going to go ahead and click on the current asking price, $4.65. 
Now, as soon as I do that, you will see the order get entered down below in the strategy builder. So right there, it says I want to buy one of the May 27th $85 calls. Now, if that was all I wanted to do, I would simply come down here and hit submit order in the bottom right hand corner. But that's not the case. What I want to do next is actually sell a further out of the money call to create a vertical spread. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down just a little bit. And let's say I wanted to sell a five point further out of the money call. So looking here at the $90 call, I can see it's currently going for 228 by 230. In order to sell this option, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click on the current bid price, $2.28. Again, as soon as I do that, it just adds that leg down below in the strategy builder. So now down there, it's saying I wanna buy one of the $85 calls while simultaneously selling one of the $90 calls. Looking right below that, it actually tells you what we're about to do. We're about to put on a long vertical call spread or a bull call spread. Once I actually have the leg selected, the only thing I have to do next is fill out the order ticket just like normal. So again, specifying what order type I wanted to use, how many spreads I actually wanted to buy, and then what price I wanted to pay for it. So doing this from left to right, we can see I currently have a limit order selected, which I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as that. I'm then gonna come over here to the quantity box and I'm gonna change this to one contract. I'm then gonna come up here to the limit price and I'm gonna specify I only wanna buy this spread for $2.30 or better. So now I've got that in there, the only other thing I might wanna change is the time and force, how long I want this order good for. Now in my case, I'm happy with it being a day order only, so I'm simply gonna come over here and hit submit. Now once we get to this page, this order confirmation page is just gonna confirm everything we just did on the previous screen. So right here it's saying we wanna buy one of the $85 calls, sell one of the $90 calls, all for a net debit of $2.30. Again, since that's exactly what I want to do, I'm simply going to hit transmit down here below. As soon as we do that, we can see the working order down here below in our order status page. And as of right now, it is still a working order. So we haven't actually bought that vertical spread yet. Now, if I did want to get a fill, so I needed to modify this order ticket in some way, maybe boost up the price a little bit, what I could do is come down here and right click on the order ticket. From there, I'm simply going to come down here to the modify screen and modify the order ticket. Once that page comes up, I can then come over here to the limit price and actually adjust that up just a little bit. So let's say in this case, I wanna bump it up to, let's say 240 and hit enter to lock it in and then hit transmit. Looking down here below, I can actually see that it still has not filled at that new price of $2.40. So let me try one more time. I'm gonna boost it up once again and try and get a fill here. We'll even just bump it up to a crazy price. I'll go ahead and throw in three bucks and I'll go ahead and hit transmit. All right, this time we can see that the order has filled this time. I was actually able to buy that uh, vertical spread for $2.46. I also have the ability to see that that filled by looking over here at the right. It now says I have a BABA May 27th 85 by 90 bull call spread. Now, later down the line, if I decide to close out this vertical call spread, like let's say I wanted to sell it for four bucks to take a profit, all I would have to do is right click on it then I would come over here to this pop-up window where it says trade and I would click on order entry here. Now, since I don't actually have an order entry tool somewhere on my actual layout, it's gonna create a new pop-up window for me. All I have to do with this window is actually specify what I wanna do. So in my case, I wanna sell this vertical spread. I wanna sell my one vertical spread, so position one here. I'm then gonna come down here and specify the price. So let's say I only wanted to sell this spread if it went back up to four bucks, because that would be almost $150 in profit. Now, once I'm happy with that, and I've got the price locked in, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over to a good until cancel order. And now I'm gonna hit submit, and then hit transmit. So now looking down here below in the order status page, I've got a working order to sell that vertical spread if it ever hits four bucks. But again, this would be a long vertical call spread where we are bullish on the underlying stock. And if you wanted to do a put spread, it would be roughly the same exact thing. However, if you instead wanted to sell a vertical spread, the process is gonna be very similar, but slightly different. So let's go over that next, but let me first flip to a different stock ticker. We'll come up here to BABA, and we'll go ahead and throw in, let's say Microsoft, MSFT. Looking down below, I now have the Microsoft option chain, and let's say for this one, I wanted to sell a vertical put spread. Now, selling a vertical put spread means I'm neutral to bullish. I think the stock price is gonna stay above a certain level or go up, ideally. Looking down below in the option chain, let's say for this example, I thought Microsoft was gonna stay above 245 for the next four days. 
Looking to the right, I can see the current price for this spread is currently going for 73 by 74 cents. Now, if I wanted to sell this 245 put, what I'm gonna do is click on the bid price, 73 cents. Just like before, that option will go down below in the strategy builder. And then the only other thing I need to do is buy the further out of the money put. Now for this example, let's say I wanted to put on a 10 point wide vertical spread. So looking up here, 10 points further out of the money would be the 235 put. Looking here, I can see it's currently going for 23 cents by 24 cents. And since I want to buy that option, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the current asking price. Now, remember in the case of a vertical spread, we're generating income. So we're actually doing this for a credit. We're getting money up front. Now, the way that we get to keep all of that money is if the stock stays above our short strike. In this case, all we're hoping for is for Microsoft to stay above 245 a share. As long as it does that, we can see down below the credit we're gonna be receiving is 56 cents. Now, if I wanted to do that, we're gonna come down here to the quantity box. I'm gonna specify one. I'm then gonna come over here to the price and I am gonna try and get that 56 cent premium here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as a day order only and I'm gonna come over here and hit submit order. Now looking here again, it's just confirming everything we're about to do. We can again see we're about to sell a bull put spread. So we're selling a vertical put spread. We're gonna be selling one of the 245s, buying one of the 235s as our hedge. And down below, you can see the total credit we're receiving for this is gonna be 56 bucks. Now, if we were happy with the spread we're about to place, everything looked good, we would simply come down here and hit transmit. From there, we can then see the order ticket down below in the order status page. And again, this one has not filled yet. So it's just a open order. But this is how you guys would mechanically create a vertical spread inside of this platform. It's pretty straightforward. You simply need to click on the bid or ask of the options you want to buy or sell. Now, creating an iron condor is very, very similar. However, we're going to be selling a vertical put spread while also selling a vertical call spread. So if we continue to use Microsoft as the example, and actually we'll continue using the May 27th options expiration as the example, we're then gonna pick a range where we think Microsoft is gonna stay between. In this example, let's say I thought Microsoft was gonna stay between 245 and 265 a share. Now, because I think it's gonna stay between 245 and 265, I'm going to be selling the 245 put and scrolling down and selecting the bid of the 265 put. So looking down here below, again, I'm selling one of the 245s, selling one of the 265s. However, in order to create an iron condor, I need to buy the wings, the hedges on either side. Now in this example, I'm gonna be putting on a five point wide iron condor. So on the call side, I'm gonna be buying the 270 call. And then looking on the put side, I'm gonna be buying the 240 put. So now looking down below, we can again see exactly what we're doing here. We're selling the 245 put, we're selling the 265 call, we're buying the 270 call and we're buying the 240 put. It's then telling us we're doing an iron condor here and looking down below, we can get roughly $1.61 credit for actually doing this trade. That means we're actually pulling in that income up front, and that's the whole point of an iron condor, to generate income. Now our ideal situation is the stock staying between 245 and 265. That's how we make that max profit of $161. Now, just like before, I would then specify how many iron condors I actually wanted to sell, what price I wanted to sell it for, and then how long I wanted the order good for. It's exactly the same as any of the other orders that we've been doing. We just, again, need to pick exactly what options we wanna buy or sell to actually create the spread. Now, finally, the very last one we're gonna discuss is actually a butterfly spread. Now, a butterfly spread is thought of more of as a neutral trade where we don't think the stock is gonna do much of anything. However, I usually think of it as more of like a lottery ticket. With a butterfly spread, we're actually picking an exact price and an exact time of day where we think the stock is gonna be. So jumping into it, let's first go ahead and delete all of these legs out of here so we can go ahead and start fresh. And I will actually still use Microsoft as the example. Now, generally speaking, when we create a butterfly, we're gonna pick the exact at the money strikes to actually do this. So in this case, we can see Microsoft is trading for roughly $260 a share. And let's say we wanted to sell two of the 260 puts here. Now, in order to sell two of them, I need to come down here to the strategy builder and change this from one contract to two contracts. Now, to actually create the butterfly, I actually need to buy my wings to either side. For this one, we'll be doing five point wide. So I'm gonna come over here to the asking price of the 255 puts, click on that. I'm then gonna come down to the asking price of the 265s and go ahead and click on that as well. Looking down below, you can actually see it identifies it as a butterfly put spread. And again, my best case scenario is uh, Microsoft being exactly $260 a share 
on the date of expiration. Now for this butterfly spread, I'm gonna be paying anywhere between 71 cents and a dollar and four cents. That's the current bid ask here. However, if I'm exactly right, the most I could make is the width of the spread. Now, since the spread is five points wide, I can make roughly $400 if I'm right. And that's why I consider it kind of like a lottery ticket. I have a very low probability of being right, but if I am right, I can make a lot of money. But I think you guys all get the general idea of how to create spreads within interactive brokers. And after today, you should all feel a lot more comfortable placing them yourself. If you have any additional questions for me or recommendations for other tutorials you guys would like me to discuss, please leave them down below. But that wraps up today's video on spreads. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your week and I'll catch you on the next one.